Hi, welcome back to this African Perspective. Thank you for stopping by. I'm so fucking sick of seeing people blame other people for not having community and saying that, oh, it's because they are introverted or they don't go outside or they choose this life for themselves. It is entirely a result of the government. We don't have community anymore because everyone has social anxiety nowadays. You have never had a critical thought in your life. You should naturally be around your community on a day-to-day -day basis without even trying, without even having to. Because they built every city around cars and not for humans, you don't see another person on your day-to-day -day basis. This kind of infrastructure forces us to spend money anytime we want to go anywhere while also keeping us isolated from each other. And that is by design. So now you don't see people in passing when you're on your way to the grocery store or when you're taking the train home from work. Whereas if you were in a walkable city, you would have more of a community feel and you would actually see people in your community on a day-to-day -day basis. They took away all of our third places and then made it to where just hanging out outside, not spending money, is a crime of loitering. So that now, anytime we do hang out, we have to be spending money to do it. Not only that, but forcing everyone to work 40 hours a week and literally taking up their entire day from them. Like, if you think about it, a 9 to 5, that is the entire day. You get home at, what, 5.30, 6, and then you have 3 hours to eat dinner, go to the gym, um, shower, get ready for the next day. You have no time for any of your own personal fulfillment or hanging out with your friends. They don't give you time for that. They don't care about that. They just want to extract your labor value. Also, the government go in decades trying to convince us that individualism is the way to go and that every single one of us needs our own house, our own microwave, our own refrigerator, our own space, or else we are literally failures. Let's bring back sharing because I want to be in a community where my neighbor feels happy to come over and ask me for a little bit of sugar. Or if one of my roommates really needs me to come pick her up from the airport. We were all sold the lie that independence and individualism is what we should be doing and is going to make us happiest when we are all now begging and desperately desiring for that community again. Most of the struggles that you have in life are caused by the systems that are put in place by our government. But ironically, instead of having compassion and consideration and community building skills, you decide to point the finger at a fellow person just like you who's probably experiencing most of the same struggles that you are too. Here's the thing, Jalen is not wrong about the economic conditions piece because yes, that does make it difficult for one person to foot the bills of the couple and themselves. And I'm actually glad he brought that up because I've been waiting for the Never Go 50-50 with a Man Brigade to tell us what they think working class people do in their relationships. How do you think finances are divided in regular working class relationships? Because I can tell you right now, most working class people cannot take on all those bills. Median salary in the United States is $48,000. There is no man that is able to take on your bills and his own on 48 k a year. Capitalism has made sure of that. The only thing is I never see any of the Never Go 50-50 Brigade people being socialists or anti-capitalists or talking about how capitalism has messed things up. In fact, it's often the opposite. A lot of you are not class conscious and you are extremely classist and you endorse capitalism in a nutshell. You idolize people who've made their wealth in very ill-gotten ways because of what you can potentially gain if you were to partner with them. You find their lifestyles aspirational despite all the negative things that they've done in order to amass that wealth. Even though it's those very things that make it impossible for a regular working class man to provide for you all the things that you want them to provide for you. And then of course you say, well, that's why I'm not gonna get a working class man. That's why I'm gonna go for a rich man. The thing is you are likely to partner within your class. If you're a working class person, the likelihood of you partnering with somebody who is in the owning class or who is not within your salary range is really unlikely. So really in actuality, if you want there to be a possibility for a man to provide for you all those things, you need to become a socialist. You need to support policies that enable people to actually have a livable wage above $48,000. With the rising cost of living, $48,000 is not a comfortable salary to exist on. But instead, you'll have focused on calling men sassy when they say that, hey, I actually can't provide X, Y, Z because I don't have the means to. Similarly, men who call women gold diggers also need to be mad at capitalism and become socialists. Instead of becoming anti-feminists, Literally look at the thing that's causing you to be in this position, capitalism. We talked about this at length over at our podcast, Sip and Politic, very many episodes that we've talked about this. 
So find one, listen to it, etc. Capitalists are literally having a field day watching us squabble over this instead of turning our attention to the actual culprit, them. They've been dividing and conquering us and they'll keep dividing and conquering us for as long as we refuse to adopt a class analysis. Mm -hmm. Due to how far we are kind of going into the whole isolation away from having a community, from people actually creating or networking or having like relationship with people, I notice the more most people are like, hey, we're going too far. Like they start craving and missing how the, uh, the ways of life before. So there's like a lot of that right now. Make sure you please click the like button. We need to have a discussion. Like I am just not understanding. And I'm so embarrassed i've never been embarrassed this much in my life i've never felt so horrible and f let down and devastated why do people just not show up anymore like why do people not go to each other's events and put their friends as a priority i just i just don't understand my heart is absolutely f broken I'm the type of person, I show up for all of my friends' events. Birthdays, baby showers, their kids' birthdays, any type of event that they have. And nobody shows up for me. I don't know whether to f cry because I'm sad or because I'm just so pissed off. My husband turned 27 today. So last night, I threw him a surprise birthday party <laughs> y'all one person came how f embarrassing and it was the person that got him out of the house for me i invited his childhood friends my friends friends that we both know his co-workers <laughs> nobody f came Except for our neighbor who got him out the house so that I could set up. I have been crying all day. I cried all last night when my husband got here to his surprise party and no one was here. I just cried all night, dude. And cried all this morning because I don't get it. I don't get it like are my friends just friends with me like whenever i'm fucking benefiting them i don't understand and i don't i didn't ask for anything i didn't ask people to bring gifts or food or anything i took care of everything i just wanted people to show up and spend some time for my husband's birthday i feel like it would have been better for me to just do nothing at all because at least then nothing is expected but to come to a, your party and know that no one cared enough to come like that is so hurtful i spent all friday night making a balloon art yeah it's not perfect and it's not fucking professional but i still put my time and energy into it did so much i bought him a fucking new hat and little decorations and a birthday cake i actually bought him two cakes i got him a cake for today and a cake for the party that nobody came to i got shit to make s'mores i made fucking so much fucking jambalaya i got i don't understand this might be actually the worst part honestly i was planning on having a fire outside and how many chairs is that seven seven chairs eight no eight chairs i even bought extra chairs those black chairs i didn't even fucking have i bought them so that we had extra seating and it was just me my husband and our neighbor like at this point what do i need to do to get friends that i can actually depend on because i've never been so hurt I'm so hurt for my husband, but I'm also hurt for myself because why am I always the first person to give a fuck about what everybody else has going on? But y'all can't even just come and say hi like nothing. You didn't even have to bring a gift. Just don't 
understand. With all of this being said, do not ask me for shit. Do not fucking invite me to shit. I don't give a fuck if it's your funeral. I am not coming. I'm not fucking coming. If you're wondering why I'm up so early, because I've been up early. It's because I'm pro I might get weepy in this video. I'm, I might cut it because I don't know how weepy I want to get. But I'm up because my high school roommate, one of my roommates from high school, I went to boarding school, is driving up from D.C. to come to my apartment and help me clean. And I just want to take this moment to say, and I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not being, I'm not exaggerating. I would not be alive if it was not for my friends. And I hear a lot of conversations. There was a video I saw recently that made me so sad. And it was this girl saying how she can't afford to have friends or for, you know, friendships, it, friendship is a luxury. Friendship, um, you know, it's about brunch, it's about experience, about doing all these things. And I understand where that thought comes from. Capitalism has really eroded um, so many fundamental things in our society. But I could not disagree more from the stance in my life. I've been unemployed. And this job market is a hard one. And so I am currently the broke friend. And I have seen my friends consistently. My friends know this. My friends... Do not make me feel like a burden. They know that experiences and the things are a backdrop to just facilitate our actual friendship and our actual bond. My friends, I sat on their couches. I just hung out with them doing nothing. They've cooked for me. They've gotten me coffee when we go out so we can talk. They try and organize things for me to go to. They invite me. And even sometimes when I, I don't have it in me to go, they still invite me. They keep inviting me. And they tell me not to worry about it, that they got me. I don't stop getting invited places. And there's something about this society and capitalism that makes you feel like if you don't have income, that you just are not able to participate in life. Couple that with depression where I don't feel like I want to participate in life more. And I have been really going through it. And I have to move out of my apartment um, because I, I can't afford to be here without a job and without any prospects coming up and my savings are dwindling. Um, and it's been really hard for me to tackle packing and cleaning in my apartment. And my friends know this. And my friends have volunteered. My friends have asked me what I need. My friends have said, tell me what the schedule is. I will come in and I will come and help you. And now I have my, my roommate from high school driving up just for the day to help me and so I can make a little dent in it and I could not be more grateful my friendships are not a luxury they are the probably one of my most life-saving measures I want to remind people you gotta love people um, and let yourself receive the love because I have been hiding from my friends a little bit kind of ducking them right because I'm like dealing with a lot of things and um, shame will make you do that but I I just I'm I'm so grateful even if that means that I got up at like four o'clock in the morning to try and start cleaning a little bit and throwing stuff out so it wouldn't be quite as bad when she comes because it's really bad and I've been trying to pack and tackle things little by little but it's it's a lot and it's really overwhelming um and I feel really like I'm not gonna get into all of that but yeah I just and I have friends who are gonna help me move some of my little things while I still try and figure out movers but they're gonna help me move like whatever they can in their cars helping me like I None of that has to do with brunch. None of that has to do with experiences. All of that has to do with people who love me and see me and want to see me more. Right? And want to love me more. And want me to love me more. Um, I, it's been, honestly, with friends like mine, it's been very easy. Easier. <laughs> 
to decenter men and decenter all of these things and not get super washed into the whole dating discourse or even the capitalism discourse that my friends keep me grounded. Um, I also have really good parents who do what they can um, from far away. And I'm really, really lucky for that. Um, and I can recognize that no matter how dark and deep I get, I can recognize how much light I have in my life. Um, and I just, yeah, there's no point to this video besides just sharing that. I really love my friends. I'm, I really love my friends. I did not realize just how bad hyper independence cooked me until I found myself getting mad when I saw people asking for help for things that I would do myself. My little sister has been learning how to braid her own hair and yesterday she asked me if I can help her part it. And in my head I was like, mm, if I say no, she's going to have to learn how to part her hair and boom. Now she knows how to part her hair. Then the other side of my head is like, girl, like she already learned how to braid. Just help her part. I was going to do it, but I didn't have time. And the result was she did it by herself. She learned how to part her hair. She bodied the braids like it looks amazing. And while it sounds sensible in the moment, I realized that I sold myself that narrative so I don't confront the fact that I literally couldn't ask for help. Or when I asked for help, people made it seem like I was asking for a million dollars. So I didn't feel comfortable asking for help anymore. And also that that feeling of anger that comes when I see people asking for help for things that I would do myself comes from the fact that I can see that you have the courage to acknowledge when you need help and I no longer do. There's just something so admirable and so courageous about just saying, you know what? I cannot do this for myself and actually reaching out and asking for that been down to my psychiatrist and my therapist they always say like oh if it's getting bad again like just reach out if you feel yourself slipping just reach out if you feel like you need something just reach out and i've had so many moments where i'm like damn it's getting bad and i've just never reached out because it doesn't even seem like a viable option to me i don't even consider that all i consider is what i can do in the present moment to help myself while there's so many aspects of that where it's like okay good self-sufficiency independence the guise of independence there is so much negative as well because then i'm kind of stepping away from that innately human thing which is community which is reaching out which is relationships which is building bridges that you can cross when you need to cross them while i'm trying to step out of this hyper independent state that i've been stuck in for a while i kind of have to confront a lot of shame shame that i've cultivated in asking for help because i've kind of built a home for the oh you need to do it yourself oh this that and the third i sheltered that thought you know what i mean like i could just name dozens of things that i've gained from doing things with myself but it's like let's get down to the nitty-gritty it's not that beneficial it quickens how soon i burn out it furthers the feeling of loneliness but yes independence has served me well it has done its time but too much of anything is detrimental so i am just over that i am so ready to say i need this i need i'm actually not ready i'm lying but i want to prepare myself to get familiar with asking for those things having a community of people that support you and will always be there for you and people that you would be there for because remember like i know that like there's some people who definitely just want to always be the takers but never give us they always want to take 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 uh, but they would never want to give and be like oh let me give back for this person but having those and those people that you want to give to and they give to you you know that kind of thing you give to them it actually helps like some way somehow there's a day where you might be needing those people and then having that kind of relationship, having people that you can talk to, having people that you can socialize with, it's very helpful and it's very good at the end of the day. But, you know, um, listening to this lady who was talking about how she threw a, a, a surprise party for her husband and nobody showed up. I just saw a recent video right now, like on TikTok which is about uh, a woman who had a wedding. She and her husband, they, they got married and just about five people, I think is it five or six people that just showed up on the wedding. And then they're already talking about GoFundMe and stuff like that. Now I get it. Throwing a party, I don't care, any celebration you're, you're, you're doing, anything you're doing at all, and you invite people and they don't show up, that is a painful situation. I don't think anybody would want to go through the pain that comes with that. Because you'll be like, wait, I really thought I had people. Like when you think you have people and then they don't show up for you, they're not there for you, when you need them, that hurts a lot. No, no lies. But now another thing is, it could be that, like, because people are even suspecting the one I told you about, like the wedding I told you about, they're suspecting that it's a lie because people do anything for uh, online to try to get people to actually pity them and send them money. But then another thing again is sometimes also we need to actually check how this, if you notice that people are not showing up for you, it could be them. But at the same time, you could also sit down and think about your own self because you could also be something like you could have done something to them. You might have maybe not showed up for them. 
now I'm not judging the situation. I'm just saying in the situation where someone is dealing with this, you just have to like think about the whole thing. Maybe you don't show up for people and then they decide not to show up for you. Maybe they are the ones who are bad and just don't, didn't show up for you. Maybe they are horrible and you shouldn't deal with them anymore because if you cannot show up for someone, at least in, a, in an event that you're invited, at least there should be a couple of people that show up. And then some, let's say, for instance, they had an emergency or they had situations that they were unable to come. But for you to totally not have people that you invited, that's... That sucks. Everybody is so lonely that they are becoming obsessed with other people. This is extremely common and I'm going to tell you why. Nowadays, the only social interaction that people are getting is online. But social media interactions are not enough to keep a person emotionally stable. Regular social contact that is in person and meaningful is what regulates the dopamine production in our brains. People who are very lonely and don't get a lot of meaningful social contact have a deficit in dopamine. So what happens is when they actually meet somebody that makes them feel truly seen or truly heard or understood, their brain will surge with dopamine. So when we become obsessed with certain individuals, what we are actually addicted to is that spike in dopamine. We are addicted to the malfunctioning of our brains. And what people don't know is that the human brain sees meaningful social interaction as necessary for survival. When you are alone most of the time, your subconscious mind believes that you don't have security, you don't have resources, you don't have support, and therefore your survival is threatened. This is why when we become separated from the person that we're obsessed with, we experience spikes of adrenaline. Our brains genuinely believe that if that person is not there, then our survival is threatened. Your obsession is saying to you, hold on to this person because this person is all you have. Modern society actually encourages disordered attachment. We live in an age of individualism and isolation, and we do not have adequate mental health resources. That means that people are putting all of their emotional burdens into relationships. They are desperate for relationships to bring them some kind of emotional relief. The way that we live today is so far removed from the way that human beings were originally meant to exist. And that is why we have this evolutionary phenomena of lonely people experiencing unhealthy, intense attachments that actually can be a threat to their health and safety and happiness. And even if you have a supportive family and a good group of friends, you can still fall into obsession with another human being. There are a few key ingredients in obsessive relationships that can get anybody hooked. People who are unstable and unpredictable also mess with our dopamine receptors. We can actually become addicted to the behavior of unavailable people due to a principle called intermittent reinforcement. A good example of intermittent reinforcement is gambling. When people gamble, they will give everything that they have. They will lose absolutely everything just for the thrill of winning one time. The same principle applies when you are messing with somebody who is unstable or unpredictable. As soon as they give you an unexpected act of kindness, your brain will receive a huge dopamine reward. And it is that spike in dopamine that you become addicted to. And the second way to become addicted to somebody is if that individual mimics one of your primary caregivers. So take me for example. I lost my mother figure at the age of 18 and later in life I formed a habit of becoming obsessed with female authority figures because my brain genuinely thought that if I became close to these women then I would somehow be able to repair the motherhood wound inside of me. If you get obsessed with people, you are not crazy. You were conditioned by modern social structures which encourage isolation and facilitate dopamine addiction. Everybody has an attachment disorder nowadays. Obsession is a byproduct of modern society, a society of people who don't know how to form meaningful connections with others. Thought who taught you how to make friends? Who taught you how to socialize? I really want you to think back to the moment in time when you made your first friendship or when you were aware of making friends. As someone who is in the post-secondary space and I study this, I work with students, I myself am also 
in this as a lived experience, I need y'all to understand making friendships is a essence of life. You need friends. And even when we are looking at this from a professional standpoint, like networking, you will start to see if you are truly trying to network, it operates in the same way as making friends or authentic connections outside of, hey, my name is Khadija. Here's my resume. I would love to work for your company. That type of networking is kind of like tier three networking, I will say, where it is just transactional. Can you do this for me so I can get this? It's not authentic connections. It's what can I get out of it? And a lot of y'all are operating through friendships at that tier three networking. This is what I have. What can I get out of you? Instead of thinking about it from an authentic friendship relationship perspective. And you also have to understand relationships take time. It takes time to get to know you. Now, some people, it will move faster. Other people, they move slower. But you have to understand the essence of relationships is time, it's trust. And typically, that just is the name of the game. That comes with time. But also, we have to look at this in the day and age that we are in where social media has become our third space and i just wrote a paper on this what happened when your third space is now digital what happens when our main avenue of networking and talking to people in an informal way is now digital it's in your pocket and we see the defund of public parks and free third spaces and free community spaces where also it seems to find social connection within a community. Now you have to have money. They are monetizing. When I say they, I'm speaking just in general. They are monetizing on community engagement. Whereas the block party was a free event. Everybody comes, bring their food, bring their games. We're all outside. You meet your neighbors. Now you have to pay entry to that block party and you have all these vendors selling something versus the potluck style, if that makes sense. And so we are in this space where capitalism and community are now intersecting in every realm and facet, which is also contributing to this loneliness epidemic that is unique to the United States. This is not a worldwide issue. When you have a part of the population who your entire life, you've been taught this American dream, you gotta get out the mud, you gotta hustle, you gotta do all this by yourself, you don't get a cookie for doing life by yourself. There is no huge trophy at the end where you do life by yourself and you have figured it all out by yourself with no help. And that is the lie that has been sold to millions of people. Then you realize, oh, I am lonely. I don't have friends I can call on. I don't have someone that can take me to the airport. I don't have someone that can help me move. I don't have someone that I can call. And I also think this conversation about friendship and romantic relationship where your romantic partner or in the media, it is being perpetuated that your romantic partner has to be your everything, your friend group, your best friend, your partner in crime, your lover, your management of grief, your everything, your family. And that is just not the reality of life. The reason why it takes a village is because you need different community perspectives. But when you are so engulfed in just me, 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 you miss out on so much of the beauty of life and communal love. Here's another thing that is not said. We all know that it's harder to make friends as you age. Making friends and dating is a social skill that you actively have to foster, actively have to build. 
after undergrad, where you have lived on campus, everything is centralized in one spot. Your social life, your work life, your school life, your food, everything is in one spot. There is no other time or there is no other institution that operates like that in the world other than universities and colleges. That system and structure is intentional. And so I, what I need people to understand is that you need community. You need friends. You need a friend group. You need to put yourself out there. You cannot rely on social media to be your third space. You have to go somewhere other than work and school. You have to incorporate fun. You can't just do the solo dates by yourself. You can't just do the dinners by yourself. You need people. But in addition to that, you need to know how to be a friend. And this is going to come with the decentralization of men and women as it relates to romantic partners. And we're going out. Let's go out to find something. Let's go out to catch something. No, you generally need community. And so this is such a layered and complex conversation, especially as we're now seeing the first groups of individuals who have grown up with our iPad in their hands since birth and the way of socialization is different because who has taught you how to make friends? So now I do get it. I understand why some people actually don't like having a bunch of friends or trying to, you know, make friends with people or have, uh, you know, like try to talk to people because sometimes like you just, you could have bad experiences now. You could just be meeting a bunch of weirdos and they just make you not be interested at all and you'd be like nah I don't I don't want to even deal with people or sometimes you can maybe be someone who's running into a lot of people that are just troublesome causing a lot of trouble in your life and bringing a lot of drama because mm, some of us are just drama free we don't really like the drama and it's either you have a bunch of people that you're dealing with and it's like you're running into those who are giving you who have jealousy and stuff like that so that is the reason why I understand why some people just you know, you don't really have so many people in their circle, but that's okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like um, we're actually kind of like as a whole in the whole community team when they are say what they're saying, we're kind of like not really having that community. When you're watching videos on social media, you will see a bunch of stuff that is telling you about how you should select people that should be your friends or your community. Oh, this person has to be this. This person has to be that. They have to be successful. They have to be this. They have to be that. And it's like, what happened to just, you know, having people and just, you know, naturally just connecting to them. Like, it doesn't have to, like, be serious where you have to be picking and choosing or be so, um, it's, you're deeply searching for flaws and you're waiting to like if they just do any error you're like bam like i'm i'm not gonna deal with this person again or you want them to just be there and do a certain thing for you in your life that's just the only reason why you're even talking to them so there's just so many things that go into this made it to the end of this video thank you for watching this video to the very end please don't forget to click the like button as i said it helps with the algorithm and i appreciate that so much and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you're watching me for the very first time i'll see you on the next one bye, bye.